Welcome to It's Supernatural with Robin Show, where we share personal experiences and scriptures on how you can walk in the supernatural. The show is mixed with off-grid living, toxic-free lifestyle, and a touch of politics. Join our host today for today's podcast, and remember, it's natural to be supernatural. God gave me specific instructions today to share with you on how you can know him. I've been wanting to do this video series for a while, but it's like, it's hard because I can go in so many different directions on how I see angels, how I experience the supernatural, how I know that I know that I hear from him, how I live in what I teach. And there's so many different directions I could go on that that I didn't know where to start. But today God gave me specific um, instructions. So, uh, some of the things, I'm, I'm just gonna kinda go over some of the things that he told me. Uh, one of the things that has really helped me and that he told me to share today was journaling. Now I know as a guy you might not journal, but he said that this was very important for three reasons. Let me first tell you what journaling is. It's writing down a record of your experiences. If you see a flash of light Oh man, I could go in so many different directions here. If you see a flash of light, write it down. If you think you read somebody's mind, write it down. Whatever experiences that you have that have to do with the supernatural kingdom of God and communicating with God, write them down. Now, here is why. Two, several reasons. One reason is whatever you give honor to, you will experience. So... If you give honor to what could be a supernatural a host, the more the angels will be around you. For example, like I take pictures all the time of, the, there is a beautiful angel right there. Gorgeous. Oh, I, I can't turn off my camera and take a picture. I'll lose y'all. Uh, but he's two of them staring at me. Um, this happens a lot when I do live videos. I see the host and it's like, I want to take a picture. Show you guys. Oh, there's another one. Um, they're all listening. Yay. See, now I'm honoring them right now. So as I'm honoring them, paying attention to them, there'll be more around me. I'll reap more around me. So whatever you give honor to, um, you'll have more of. So the more you begin to notice the hosts in heaven and the, the imprints in the sky of their faces, um, the more you will receive that. It's the reaping and sowing concept. What you honor, you'll have. So... So he says, when you journal, write down your experiences uh, because it's honoring and he, he said that you will be able to revisit it. If you've ever had an encounter with God and you wrote it down in detail after the encounter, anytime you go back to that book, you're going to be able to revisit that place. That's why it's so dangerous, these people that read Harry Potter books and New Age books and watch horror on TV and, and listen to scary stuff. They think about it, they meditate on it, and, and they revisit it. They're giving honor to it and they're revisiting it, which is giving permission for those spirits to become real in their life, to become involved in their life. So, so specifically God said that you need to journal because journaling is, is giving honor and journaling is allowing you to revisit the situation. For example, if you have learned about the courts of heaven, when you have a courts of heaven experience and you write it down, you will be able to easily, in a moment's notice, go back to that place. And one of the things that he told me to do personally, and I suggest for you to do this, is get pictures Go on the internet and look for pictures that remind you of heaven or how you think heaven would be and and uh, focus on just stare at those pictures for a while till they become familiar and when you close your eyes you'll be able to see those pictures and then it'll be like a movie in your head it'll, the interaction will begin to happen and he told me that's how to step into the realm of the supernatural uh, because I heard about the Bible talks about the garden all the time and I know that we have gardens and in this in the spirit realm because we are first a spirit we live in a body and we have a soul and the garden is something we all should experience and we can go there and interact with God 
And if you, so God said, go and get some pictures of what you think a garden looks like, what, what you like in a garden. And so I got a, a, a picture of somebody on a swing because that reminded me of garden bridges. I had to really think, what, what, would, what would relax me? What, what would I enjoy? What do I like? And I got bridges with flowers growing uh, over a, a dry lake bed and there's flowers in it. I got um, swings, I got tree houses, I got um, a cabin tree house and just different stuff like that. And so he said, meditate on it, think on it, look at it, and imagine it, remember it, close your eyes and try to visualize it, then look at the picture again and so on. And I started doing that and by looking at these pictures I was able to have an interaction with Jesus. You know, came into the into the garden and, and talked and, and, and so on. We had a had an experience. But it's like the it's like the word. If you don't put the word into you, then God has nothing to work with to come out. Okay. Okay, so the first thing was journaling because it, it will allow you to revisit, to return to the place and to remember. There'll be times when you'll have dry spells in your life and it's not because God pulled away. It's most likely because you're not focusing. When I'm not taking pictures of angels, I'm not seeing them as often. But when I'm looking for them in the sky and when I'm, I'm thinking about them and reading about them and meditating on them, I begin to see them all over the place. So you want to remember there'll be times when when I don't see angels and then I'll start reading a book or a book and then all of a sudden they'll start appearing again because I'm giving them honor I'm remembering I'm rereading my diary my journal what I wrote down and so that's really cool so that's number one he said journal to know him you need to journal now I'm assuming and taking for granted that you know to get into the word that you know to read the word about supernatural encounters in the Bible that's number one that's a given okay get into the word read the word you have every right to experience everything in the Old and New Testament is yours the Old Testament you have better so you can experience that and more in the New Testament okay so that's a given I'm not even talking about that and then he said "Ooh, now it's getting cold in here so let me roll up this window where the wind's coming okay <laughs> Then the second thing he said to share with you is prayer. Now this is really cool. If you don't speak in tongues because your denomination taught against it, here's what he said. When you pray normally, when you pray like a lot of churches pray, Father, bless this, I need this, help me with this, I'm praying for this person, I, you know, I speak to the cancer and tell it to be gone, okay? What you're doing is you're praying out of your soul. You are praying out of what knowledge you have. And he said, what makes you think that you have all the knowledge about the situation that you should have? What makes you think that there's not some things hidden that you don't know about? Just because this person says, I need prayer because I have cancer or something like that. And you pray the way you know how to pray. But there's more to the situation. Perhaps they got cancer because they have bitterness in their heart and they open the door to the enemy. Well, if you pray in English, you are not all knowing. So you are not going to know how to pray beyond your head knowledge, and your soul knowledge. So God said that because you're not all knowing, you need to pray in the spirit. Because when you pray in tongues or in the spirit, you are praying in God's understanding you are praying as the Spirit helps you and the Spirit knows so he can bring revelation to your heart and to your mind and so number two is you want to pray in English you want to pray the word but you want to pray in unknown tongues because you are not all knowing you don't know the whole situation and you are very prideful if you think that English is the only way you're supposed to pray because that means you think you're all knowing if you are an author or an inspiring author, we have great news for you. We publish family safe books for only $399. You heard right. As an author of over 50 books, Robin has the experience, knowledge, and tools to get your book published and distributed worldwide as a print and digital book. Our team will take your book and create a professional ebook and print book. 
The following steps are what is included in our fantastic price of only $3.99 or $4.99 for picture books. Interior design and format for print and Kindle. Ebook conversion. Professional book cover for print version. Front, spine, and back. Professional book cover for Kindle version. Your ISBN number and worldwide distribution with print on demand. We do this all for you. We set up your account on Amazon and publish your book on your account. When you are ready to order copies of your book to sell or give away to friends, you simply sign into your Amazon account and order the number of books you need at a discounted price. No minimum order needed. To learn more or to start the process, go to www.robinbremer.net. That's R O B I N B R E M E R.net. Um, if you think that you can't hear from God because it's not something we should do, then go back into the book of John and study the book of John. The book of John is my favorite book in the whole Bible. I love the book of John. I could stay there. I could, I could take one sentence and get a year's worth of teaching out of that one sentence. The book of John is, is so awesome. But he said, um... In John 12, 26, he says, Where I am, my followers will be also. And he said he wanted his followers to be where he was. And so, and he's, and the Word of God says that we are to seek those things which are above where Christ is seated by the right hand of the Father. So, we are to seek heavenly encounters. We are to seek being in heavenly places. We are to seek the courts of heaven. And everything that has to do with heaven, everything on earth here is a set up to be just like heaven. And he wants us to take heaven and make earth like heaven. He wants us to be healthy and whole and healed and prosperous and rich and full of wisdom, knowledge and discernment. And this is, this is something that he told me last night. The main thing he says, get out of the death cycle okay did you guys hear that get out of the death cycle that is so exciting he said i came to give life abundantly anything in your life that is not abundant life you are to take your authority pray in the spirit and believe god for abundant life now he specifically said um let me see here he specifically said that we are, I, I was having a problem with something both my mother and my father had. A fear of a specific thing. And it was illogical. It didn't make any sense. And for a couple of years I've been fighting this. Coming against it in every way that I know how. And going to the courts of heaven and everything. But he gave me something that really helped me. And I will, I'm hoping that it will help you. If you don't have abundant life, then you need to learn about the courts of heaven. Because if you don't have abundant life, there is a legal loophole that Satan has found and is using against you to keep you from having abundant life. Now, this is what God showed me. First of all, he said, when somebody in your family dies... Keep it in the journal. Make a note if there's any changes that happen in your life. Because there are spirits that will, are uh, generational spirits that could be on your family members that will try to attach itself to you. And God said, when you come into agreement with what they're saying, you now have inherited a spirit. Okay, so when family members die, you don't want to inherit any of the spirits that are attached to them, that have followed them down generational lines, um, that are harassing them, that are stealing from them. So take note of things that you're thinking as they die or when they die, things that have changed in your family because if if you're being attacked suddenly by a spouse or something, it could be that that spirit has attached itself and is trying to get a headway 
in that other person's life. So, so that's one of the things God showed me. And that's one of the things that I dealt with this morning that I really got me excited. I wanted to share with you. And this is what he said. Um, you are to break off all agreement with the spirit, with the life, with the cycle of death. You are to break off all agreement with the cycle of death. Divorce the spirit of the cycle of death. Uh, repent for coming into agreement with the cycle of death. And he said this is not just with a spirit of somebody that passed on or a generational spirit. This is if you have if you have sickness or disease of any kind in your body, you are connected with a death cycle. And you are coming into agreement with it every time you share about it, every time you complain about it and speak about it. You are agreeing, this is my sickness. I have blank. You're coming into a death cycle agreement with that. So he says, break off all agreement. Repent for agreeing with the death cycle. Um, repent for all the words that you have, all the words that you have spoken in agreement with the death cycle. All the thoughts and accusations that, that, have to do with the death cycle command that spirit to go shut the door to that and take authority over and then agree with and bind to you abundant life uh, an eternal life everything that's uh, eternal life and abundant life and that's heaven on earth bind that to you loosen that to you come into agreement with that and break off all agreement with the death cycle now he said to me the death cycle is anything in your body or your soul that brings death, okay? It can be, uh, if you had a trauma experience, if you had uh, a hot, hot, anything in the hospital, people can speak over to you, over you, not meaning to or meaning to while you're under. A uh, dentist, uh, when you, if you go under. Um, death cycle, it could be a trauma, an accident, a car accident. Uh, somebody dying in your house, you witnessing something, even you seeing something on TV, uh, most of the trauma demonic that attaches to us, attaches to us when we're very young children, even in the womb. I had a spirit attach itself to me, and this is some of the things I had to work through. As a baby, my mother fell down the steps that my father was building, and also I had to deal with that trauma of her falling down the steps and all the emotions that she went through but all the anger she had toward my father because he built he was building the steps and then I had to deal with um, trauma that came to me through my mother and my father because I don't actually know if my mother ever really loved my father the way that you should because supposedly she always told me that he was dating her sister and then he kidnapped her and wouldn't let her go home till she agreed to date him or something and eventually they got married and eventually they got divorced because my mom fell in love with someone else so I had to go through breaking off that death cycle okay so death cycle comes from trauma experienced even if it's not true if you believe something it's true to you and to your body and your body responds and reacts to it so break off that death cycle Okay, so, um, and he said to agree with life. So to get to know him more, to know you hear from him is journal so that you can revisit and return to the spot so that you can build your faith and remember later. Pray in English, but also pray in tongues because you're not all knowing. You don't know the whole situation. And come into agreement with life and break off everything that you can think of in a death cycle. I can't tell you how important it is to um, write down your dreams. Uh, because the more you write down, this hair is annoying me. The more you write down your dreams, the more you will begin to be given understanding in them. And remember, you are in Christ and Christ is in you. And in him is all wisdom and all understanding. So you've been giving everything for life and godliness. And it's in you. So by speaking in tongues, it comes out. It comes, it goes from your spirit into your head knowledge, into revelation. Okay. Okay, so my husband just sent me uh, a message, so I wanted to see who that was. Um, so you want to pray in tongues, you want to come into agreement, and uh, 
you you want to give the angels permission to work in your house to work for you oh one more thing I know I was I got sidetracked there uh, remember the death cycle is anything that comes to kill steal and destroy and Jesus came to give you life and give it more abundantly so break off all the death and uh, open your house invite the angels uh, in uh, j just because we're talking to angels doesn't mean we worship them you talk to your car you're not worshiping you say you stupid car you got a flat tire again or you talk to your dog and say what were you doing did you do that okay you're talking to your dog you're talking to your kids you don't worship them we're talking to angels they're partners with us they're part of our ministry team we have to talk to them if somebody knocked on the door and in the, old, in the New Testament and they went to answer the door and it was an, it was Paul and they thought it was Paul's angel and nobody got up and ran to the store and said I want to see Paul's angels wow how cool how awesome wow look at there's Paul's angel I never saw an angel that is so exciting they didn't do that in the New Testament they kept on having their prayer meeting and praying for Paul to be released because angels were common then they honored them they apparently our angels look like us some of them so they thought that was Paul's angel so get out of your box get out of religion it's a relationship it's not about rules it's a relationship and read the Bible because we can experience this this is how we are supposed to live connection to the Father relationship with the Father hearing the Holy Spirit within us experiencing the angels outside of us hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit inside of us having visitations in the Old Testament 70 people went up to heaven and ate with God and death is not the door to experience heaven death is not the door to experience the supernatural okay you have experienced death already you died in Christ so you can see God face to face and live because you are already dead death is not the door to heaven okay life is abundant life eternal life life in Christ Jesus so expect to experience the supernatural things of God expect to it experience the world that is intertwined with our world and 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 get to know him so basically that's why I wanted to share I think next time I'm going to share a little bit about communion because I have such an awesome revelation such love for communion such a oh communion is so awesome I wish I could share it now but I've done enough sharing so this was the first in my series of knowing him this video share it with your friends um, and let people know about it and I really pray that you all come to hear uh, and know God because it's part of, uh, of what the blood of Jesus paid for us to have thank you for joining us for today's podcast if it was a blessing to you Please consider financially supporting us by clicking on the Sponsor This Podcast button. Any links mentioned in this podcast will be listed below along with any affiliate products, services, or partner websites. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your social media site and remember, it is natural to be supernatural.